When you're learning German, you have to contend with verbs such as sein, to be, that change a lot. I mean, seriously, what is this? We have, you know, some versions here that at least start with the S-E-I, all right, you know, we can follow that a little bit, but then, you know, all of these B's and W's all over, I mean, what is this? It's understandable that it would be quite overwhelming and confusing, but by the end of this video, I want you to be feeling more capable and confident when it comes to German verbs. We're going to break them down into a three-step formula that allows you to see how you can correctly start with any German verb, break it down to the component parts that you need in order to manipulate it into the uh, different varieties, specifically in the present tense. Before we get started with that formula, I want you to, uh, to, to see this. So studieren, another German verb, this time meaning to study, here we can quickly see, you know, that these eight different variants are all related to each other, unlike sein, right? So that's wonderful. But here's the thing, okay? We have eight different versions of this easiest type of verb in German. Compare that to, in English, the verb to be is our most difficult verb, and we have eight different versions, okay? So in English, we might have simply three different versions of a verb. So in English, we're going from three to eight, right? And that eight is the starting point for German verbs. And then from there, it goes up to as many as 19, which is what we have with the verb sein. Okay, so again, understandable if this has felt like a lot, but that's all going to change because we're going to, in this video, help you understand what is going on with all of these verbs that change so much. So the first thing is we need to start with the base verb, which in English is going to be to study or to put, to be, right? It's always going to be to plus uh, the, the main verb, if you will, and that is our base verb, also called the infinitive verb. In German, we don't have two words that we have to work with. It'll be just one, the studieren, for example, that we've already seen, and then also uh, for a second example, stellen, which is how you say to put in German. Okay, so that's easy enough. After we have our base verb, which note is also called the infinitive verb, verb. Okay, so you'll hear me use that vocabulary as well. The next step is to find the verb root. In English, the verb root is found by simply taking out those twos. Okay, so from the infinitive or the base form to study, to put, if we take out the two, then the root is study or put. And that's what we're going to make all of these little changes to. In German, then, we just have the one word that is our infinitive, and to get to the root, we are going to knock the en off of the end of the verb, and what we're left with is the verb root. Take off the en, what we're left with is the verb root, also called the verb stem. So with studieren, if we take off the en and we're left with the root, that's exactly what all of these different versions have in common, right? They all start with studier, the root of the infinitive verb studieren. Now I want you to pause and practice this information by working with these infinitive verbs, these base verbs, and to complete that second step in our process, which is to find the verb root. So how do you do that? You take off the en every time, and what you're left with is the verb root, aka the verb stem. So if you really want to get a lot out of this, I encourage you to write all of these verbs down and actually do, like manually do this exercise, but at the very least, pause the video and mentally do this exercise and then check your answers with me. 
All right, so rapid fire, if we go through and we take off all of these ENs, we are left with the roots or the stems of the verbs for our purposes right now. Doesn't even matter what these verbs mean, but they are all very, very common verbs in German that you will definitely want to learn if you don't know them already. All right, so already we're to our final step in our process, which is to add on conjugations, which have to agree with pronouns. All right, so there are going to be multiple sub steps, if you will, to completing this step number three. But the very first question, of course, is simply, well, what are verb conjugations? Returning again to studieren, if again, we take the en off of the infinitive and we're left with the stem, the root, then what you see on the end of all of those roots are two, three, sometimes, oops, I need that T in there, four letter changes, and those are called conjugations. So we actually, at the core of the matter, have simply four conjugations that we're going to work with in German in any tense. And they are EN, E, ST, and T. We see this again with the verb stellen. We have EN, E, ST, and T all being tacked onto the root, right? Or the stem of the verb. Now let's pause and practice this information. Here are uh, some conjugated forms of some additional verbs that are very common. And what I want you to do is simply recognize which of the four conjugations are at play here. So for example, we have a T conjugation here, an E conjugation here, an E N, right? Pause the video. Again, write this out and do it manually if you can, but if not, at least think this through in your head and then press play again and we'll go through the answers together. So we have here an E conjugation, E N conjugation, S T, E, S T, E N, S T, T, E, S, T, and T. Awesome. Now you might be wondering, why are there all of these different verb conjugations? Excellent question. I'm so glad that you asked. It's helpful at this point to look at a comparison between English and German side by side. So if we look at the German verb gehen, right, this is the base form, the infinitive form, we see here the English base verb or infinitive verb to go. And now if we break this down into a table, we have I go, you go, he, she, it goes, we go, you go, they go. So what's happening in English? We have five different instances of using simply the infinitive form of the verb, right? Just go. And then we have only one instance yeah, of using a slightly different form, the goes, right? He, she, it in English will have a verb uh, conjugation of an S, which sometimes requires an E in front of it, all right? So now compare this to German, where we have this instance and this instance of the infinitive form being used, right? But now we have an E conjugation here, an ST conjugation here, and then twice that we use a T conjugation. So we have all four of those verb conjugations at play in German. If we put this into a standard table for the present tense, right? So to say, I go or I am going, then what we're working with here is the, these are all of the pronouns, right? So that third step, remember we have to add the conjugations and they have to agree with the pronouns. So the pronouns are saying, I, you, he, she, it, and then, Oops, we almost wrote that in German. And then you again, and they. Okay, so those are the English pronouns, I, you, he, she, it, etc. And then in German, right, those pronouns are ich, 
du, er, sie, es, wir, ihr, and z. Okay, so we have you, um, this is called the informal you, that takes the st conjugation. If you're talking to multiple people, kind of a y'all concept, if you will, uh, then that becomes ia, and it has a different conjugation. It has the t conjugation. But there are more U's, okay? This is a little confusing for English speakers initially, but you can do it. So these, the do and the ia, are called the informal U's, right? When you're talking to people that you know well. And then we have what are called the formal U's, which are always capitalized, the capitalized Z's, okay? So if you're talking to a professional of any kind or simply someone you don't know very well, you know, the cashier at the grocery store or whatever, you would use this formal address in German, which is, again, the capitalized Z. And notice that it also uses a different conjugation, right? The E-N, so we have the S-T for one U, the T for when you know, the, the for y'all, okay, is a good way to think about it, and then the E-N for the singular and the plural formal use. Okay, so we can work with this table to pause and practice this information Namely, that first I want you to match up the variant, the form of the verb with the pronoun that it goes with, okay? So that E conjugation is always paired with the pronoun ish, right? So if you want to say I, whatever, whatever, it's going to be ish plus that E conjugation. If you want to say you, just one person, right, that's going to pair with the ST conjugation. Here we have another E, so that's going to go back up to the ish, right, and then so on and so forth, okay? Again, if you want to really, really get everything out of this you can, you can copy down what I've written here so that you can actually physically write it out. That's for better for retention, but at the very least, mentally go through this list of verbs and match up what you know, with the, the conjugation that pairs with the different pronouns, remembering that sometimes we have multiple pronouns that use the same conjugation, like the he, she, it, and the y'all, both using the T conjugation, or both we, right, via, and they, a lowercase z, using the en conjugation. So pause the video, try this on your own, and then we'll go through the answers together. Okay, so because of this E conjugation, this is going to go back up to ish. Here we have a T conjugation, so this can agree with both er, sie, es, he, she, it, and also with the plural informal U, ia. Again, we have another E conjugation, so this goes all the way up to ish. And here we have an en, which can go to three different places, right? That is a conjugation used by the formal u, the capitalized z. It's also used by via, which means we. It's also used by z, meaning they. Now over in this column, we have firstly a t conjugation. Again, that's used by two different sets of pronouns, the he, she, it, and the y'all. The E conjugation always goes exclusively with ish. The en, right, or the base verb, the infinitive verb, goes three different places. The formal u, we, via, and they. E conjugation, again, exclusively ish. En, yet again, those three different places. Z via and this z the st exclusively pairs with do and then the e again exclusively agrees with ish well done 
All right, we're gonna practice this information more, but this time you need to recall the pronoun and be able to write that in. So you still have to make note of whatever conjugation you see at the end of the verb, right? You can even go through the whole list and find that information first, but then after that in the blank, you need to either write in or again, think about what pronoun in German would line up with that conjugation. And again, sometimes it's gonna be multiple ones. It could be the capitalized Z, could be V, it could be the lowercase Z meaning they, right? So pause the video, do the rest of this work yourself, and then we'll go over the answers. Carrying on, we have ich, that pairs with the E conjugation. Again, our three options the capitalized Z, lowercase z, and also via, that goes with the en conjugation. Ish, again with the e. Du, right, is the only one that uses the st conjugation. The en is again our set of three options. st, only du takes that. T, we have er, z, and s, he, she, it, and also ia, right, the y'all. The e conjugation goes just with ish. st agrees only with do. And then a t one more time is again ea, z, and s, and also ia. We can now practice plugging in any verb into this present tense conjugation table. So for example, if we work with the common verb machen, which means to do or to make, okay, then we go through our process. So we already have the base verb, the infinitive verb, that's how you are going to learn verbs in German is learning that form. But now step two, we have to reduce it down to the root, which is mach. Okay, so now we can simply plug mach, right, that verb root, into our table over and over again to get the different varieties that we need, right? Because it's always root plus conjugation to give us ich mache, du machst, sie machen, er, sie, es macht, Wir machen, ihr macht, sie machen, and then again, sie machen, just with that different definition of they do versus the formal you do versus the she does, right, which the clue there is our conjugation. So now I want you to pause and practice and do a filling out of a present tense conjugation table on your own. This time, the verb that I want you to work with is again the very common verb, kommen, which means to come. So firstly, what do you need to do? You've been given the base verb, the infinitive verb. Step number two, you need to find the root. How do you do that? Take off the en and what you're left with is the root. So now, write out this table by doing root plus the conjugation for this whole table. Pause the video, do this work on your own, and I'll check in with you when you're done. Okay, so we need to have ich komme, du kommst, sie kommen, er, sie, es kommt, wir kommen, oops, that was a weird looking M, Ihr kommt, sie kommen, again, and again, sie kommen. So now, here's the thing. I believe in simplifying everywhere we possibly can, and we can simplify this table, so we ought to. Since our formal U, right, the capitalized Z, uses the E-N conjugation just like the Z that means they, we can actually just get rid of this whole line knowing that it's identical 
to the conjugations used for they, all we have to do is remember to capitalize the Z if we're using it as the formal U. So if we do that, now we have just this table, okay? Minus one whole line, very convenient. And so you just have to remember that Z is going to use the EN conjugation regardless if we're saying they and whatever the verb is, or if we're trying to do a formal U, which I'll capitalize, again, we don't have this concept in English, but to try to relate it, the capital U uh, is going to use the exact same conjugation. So with this in mind, I want you to pause and practice again with another verb, okay? Namely, I want you to now do bringen, which means to bring, okay? And this time, you need to put in the root of the verb plus recall the conjugations on your own. So again, we have to find the root. How do we do it? Take off the E-N, and what we're left with is the root. You're gonna use that bring, 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 bring for the whole table, and now you need to remember which of those four conjugations are used where. Pause the video, do this work on your own, and then check your answers with me. All right, our pronoun ish, meaning I, always pairs with an E conjugation. So we need the root, plus an E for ich bringe. Du, you, always pairs with an ST, so we have root plus ST, du bringst. Er, sie, es, he, she, it is root plus T. Via is root plus EN, or it simply takes the infinitive is how we can think of that, right? We have the infinitive with the EN, and if we take it off only to just put it back on again, right? It's the same difference as never changing anything. So via bringen, that's just the base form of the verb there. Then ia, meaning y'all, uses a T conjugation, right? Just like he, she, it, it's the same. Then Z is again, taking the infinitive or the base form of the verb because its conjugation is an en just like we took away from our infinitive verb up here. And again, remember, this z could also be capitalized to be z bringen for the formal u regardless if you're talking to one person or many people. All right, here's one last chance to practice all of this material, and truly, you're going to have to do all of it this time yourself. So the verb to use this time is kaufen. Should have been writing it down here this whole time. Kaufen means to buy, but now not only do you need to plug in the root and recall the conjugation, here you have to recall the pronoun as well. So there are two ways to do this. Both are equally good, it's just whatever works for your brain. You can either fill out each line in its entirety and then move on to the next line, or you can break this down into three different steps and do all of the pronouns first and then go through and plug in the root six times and then go back through a third time and add on the conjugations. Again, completely up to, do, to you, but pause the video, do the work, and then we'll go through the answers together. So we have ish, kaufe, with that E conjugation, du, kaufs, that's a weird looking U, fix it, okay, with the ST conjugation, er, z, s, he, she, it, kauft, T conjugation, via, taking the infinitive, ia, y'all, taking the T conjugation, and then Z, lowercase for they, taking the infinitive, or of course we can just remember that we could capitalize that Z and it takes the exact same form of the verb. Well done, in this video you have learned how to start with the base verb or the infinitive verb, then reduce it down to the verb root by taking off that en, and then finally adding on one of four conjugations that have to agree with the pronouns 
ish, do, etc., etc., so that you have the correct version of the verb to work with in the present tense specifically. But it's not only verbs that change so much in German, nouns also change a lot in German. Keep watching with me here on YouTube, click on that next video to learn about why German nouns are so hard. See you there.